Welcome to the Naples Community Church Podcast with Pastor Kurt Anderson. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you find this sermon inspires you, builds your faith, and gives you perspective to see God moving in your life. We trust God has great things in store for you. Enjoy today's message. Our text this morning comes from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthian church. And actually, we don't know how many letters there were. There may have been a half dozen letters. But Paul had trouble with this church. And he had, it turns out, he had a group of people, some who came in from the outside, who were super Christians, or so they presented themselves. They put, presented themselves as apostles and as they referenced in seminary, uber apostoli, uber apostles, um, extremely high level apostles. And they came in bragging. Well, this is Paul's response to the damage that they did in the church. Again, again I say, don't think that I'm a fool to talk like this but even if you do, listen to me, as you would a fool, to a foolish person, while I boast a little. Such boasting is not from the Lord, but I, am, but I am acting like a fool. And since others boast about their human achievements, I will too. After all, you think you are so wise, but you're putting up with fools. You put up with it when someone enslaves you takes everything you have, takes advantage of you, takes control of everything and, and slaps you in the face. I'm ashamed to say that we've been too weak to do that. But whatever they dare to boast about, I'm talking like a fool again, I dare to boast about it too. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I know I sound like a madman, but I have served him far more. I have worked harder, been put in prison more often, been whipped times without number and faced death again and again. Five different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with the rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and day adrift at sea. I've traveled on long journeys. I've faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I've faced danger from Gentiles. I've faced danger in the cities, danger in the deserts and on the seas. And I've faced danger from men who claim to be believers, but are not. I've worked hard and long, enduring many sleepless nights. I've been hungry and thirsty and have often gone without food. I've shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. Then besides all this, I have the daily burden of my concern for all the churches. Who is weak without my feeling the weakness? Who is led astray that I do not burn with anger? If I must boast, I would rather boast about the things that show how weak I am. God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is worthy of eternal praise, knows I'm not lying. When I was in Damascus, the governor under King Artemis, Artis, Aratus kept guards at the gate, city gates to catch me. I had to be lowered in a basket through a window in the city to escape from him. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And God had his understanding to this hearing of his word. So the Apostle Paul, in starting these churches, did so in a manner that was a bit of a surprise to people because Paul was known as one of the persecutors of the church. 
He was known as one who was going about and dragging people out of their homes so that they might be imprisoned and sometimes killed. And Paul had been dramatically transformed, met by the risen Christ on the road to Damascus. And, and the apostle says that he was the least of all the apostles. He was like one untimely born. He actually references himself to a, a miscarriage as one untimely born. And he never presented himself in any other way. But in come these uber apostles. In, in come these super Christians. Don't you just love super Christians? Those people who just are quick to tell you how, how very exceptional they are. Or they, they lather you with all kinds of God language. And, and we end up feeling kind of crummy. Because we know in our own hearts, we're not all that great a Christian. We try, but we fail. The Apostle Paul's the same way. He was not a, an uber apostle. He wasn't even an uber Christian. He called himself the chief of sinners. And, and so he, he had to deal with the fact that while he's gone, behind his back, here are these super Christians reminding the Corinthian church of just what a bad guy Saul, now Paul, is. Just what a, a low life he is. And, and this is doing damage in the church. It's leading people away. It's leading people to think that what is this really all about? But it's about success about being victorious, about somehow being above it all. And it missed the point completely, and a lot of the Corinthian ch Christians were, were, were drawn off, and, and they entered into this criticism of Paul. And then, of course, some people let Paul know about it. And Paul heard, well, you know, they don't really think that you're a very good preacher. Or you're not keeping up on your pastoral care. Or you're not, you're not a very good administrator. They're hearing all this stuff behind, coming out to him from behind his back. It's kind of like the story of church land. <laughs> it just, you know, none of us pastors aren't perfect. We're, we're flawed, we're broken human beings. But then the apostle Paul, when he writes to them, and as I say, we have a series of correspondences. We have identified two letters, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, but we have many letters that those two letters are made up of, and, and in all likelihood, some letters that we don't, don't have anymore. But what is he saying? Is that I have failed in life. I've failed a lot. I was persecuting the church. I don't present myself as some sort of a super Christian. I've had a bunch of failures along the way. But by the grace of God, I, I kept going. I just kept going. And I, I managed to, well, I, I managed to at least start some churches, at least get some things going. But it doesn't make me a better person, a better Christian. So you want to hear me boast? Paul says, like those guys came in boasting? Well, I can do that too. And what he goes to is that, well, I was shipwrecked. and They beat me with rods and they stoned me, they imprisoned me. It's not the story of success. He details one failure after another. And, and then he culminates it with that phrase, well, if I'm, going to be, if I'm going to boast, I'm going to boast in my weaknesses. Because when I'm weak, then I'm strong. When I'm weak in myself, when I'm not relying on me, my capabilities, when I'm fully aware of my flaws and my foibles and my shortcomings and my sins, 
when I'm fully aware of those things, then I've got the strength that I need to do what God calls me to do. It's by the grace of God. I was chatting recently with Buzz Shaw, who is the um, retired uh, chancellor of Syracuse. And uh, I meant to wear my orange and blue tie this morning, just in case he showed up today. But uh, I could care less about Syracuse basketball. <laughs> um, but I was chatting with him um, recently, and he was telling me the story of his son, who was not that tall, but he was playing on the high school basketball team. And he was under the basket at the end of the game, and the whole game was relying upon him to make the basket. And somebody else shot, and he was there right under the basket to get the rebound. He went up and missed. And he got the rebound again. He went up and, and missed again. And he got a rebound the third time. He went up and missed again. Buzz told me, he's laughing. Told me he went to his son afterwards after the game was lost. And he said, son, I am so proud of you. Not for succeeding, but for persevering in the face of failure. To keep going, to keep trying. As Pastor Bill indicated, failure isn't final, it isn't fatal. Failure isn't fatal. We let it become fatal and we collapse into ourselves. We become discouraged and enter into despair. And we, we all know people who you listen to them and they are the success of the world. Never hear anything that might indicate that they've, they've stumbled along the way. And notice, when somebody's giving you their resume and they're just such big shots and they're so important, we don't have any connection place with that. But if somebody tells you about a place where they, they stumbled and fell and they, they failed at something and they had a breach in their life, well, we can relate. That's where we can enter in. That's where we can begin the, the goodness of relationship. Relationship and love, which starts with vulnerability. When we share our weaknesses. Thomas Watson, who was the CEO of, eight, of uh, IBM way back when, in the 50s and 60s, had this to say to his people. You can be discouraged by failure, or you can so learn from it, so go ahead and make mistakes, you can learn from it. So go ahead and make mistakes. Make all you can. Because remember, that's where you'll find success. On the far side of failure. We find success on the far side of failure. And that's the, the message that, that we get all the time from our faith. Where in our faith do we get any kind of message about presenting ourselves as big shots to the world. It's, it's not there. And if we review the Old Testament characters one after another, we hear of their failures, their flaws, their brokenness, their hardships. And, and so it's on the far side of failure that they found success. Same is true with William McRaven. This is a, uh, a sermon series that I'm drawing off of his little book called Make Your Bed. It's fabulous. It's online. It's free. Just do Make Your Bed PDF and, and you can, you can uh, follow <laughs> what the sermon series is all about. But he has this to say. He almost washed out of the seals. You will pay for your failures, but if you persevere, if you let those failures teach you and strengthen you, then you will be prepared to handle life's toughest moments. In July 1983, July 1983 was one of those tough moments. As I stood before the commanding officer, I thought my career as a Navy SEAL was over. I had just been relieved of my SEAL squadron 
fired for trying to change the way my squadron was organized, trained, and conducted missions. As I was to find out, change is never easy, particularly for the person in charge. Fortunately, even though I was fired, my commanding officer allowed me to transfer to another SEAL team, but my reputation as a SEAL officer was severely damaged. Everywhere I went, other officers and enlisted men knew I had failed, and every day there were whispers and subtle reminders that maybe I wasn't up to the task of being a SEAL. At that point in my career, I had two options. Quit and move on to civilian life, or weather the storm and prove to others and myself that I was a good SEAL. I chose the latter. He persevered. He was the commander of the operation that got Osama bin Laden as now the chancellor of the University of Texas. And he almost got fired as a SEAL. He almost was washed out simply because he was trying some new things and sometimes in the military you just don't try new things. Initiative is not necessarily appreciated in all organizations, depending of course. But he persevered, he just kept going, even in the face of all of that backtalk, as did the Apostle Paul. All of that backtalk. And he chose the latter. He chose to go ahead and, and go on. And despite his failures, despite that history, or perhaps because of that history, because of that failure, because of that reputational damage that he had suffered. When Jesus was crucified, he was crucified as an insurrectionist. The sign on the cross said, this is the king of the Jews. He was crucified by Rome for attempting to usurp the throne. And these men, the disciples and the men and women, all of whom followed this man Jesus, by Friday night of Good Friday, scattered like rabbits. They were hiding. They were afraid. They realized, some of them who had been with Jesus since the beginning realized, well, we followed a failure. This is where it led us. And now our lives are at stake. Now it's our skins on the line. And then, of course, they're together on Sunday night in the upper room. They'd heard, but who did they hear from? They heard from the women. And couldn't have been some guys that went to the tomb that was the women that went to the tomb, and they heard from these women. But they didn't know what to think, because the women, what they said was so convincing that Jesus had, had risen from the dead. I mean, how can this be? So the disciples are gathered together in the upper room. The doors were locked. And as the Gospels say, Jesus suddenly was among them. Now, Jesus among them was not in their midst floating with a halo and all that glow stuff around him. He wasn't like we see in a lot of art where his arms are out and there's you know, sunbeams and everything else. He was among them. And what did he do? He showed his scars. He was there to demonstrate the reality of his woundedness, the scars in his hands, the scar in his side. He didn't come in as one who was gathering glory to himself because of his being resurrected by the Father. He came in in love and vulnerability, 
showing his scars. Scars which he alone bears to this day in eternity. Unlike the rest of us. So the lame will walk and the, the blind will see and the deaf will hear all of the afflictions of this life, all of the affliction gathered into our bodies will be wiped away, but Jesus will bear his scars. And so he likewise, even on the cross, persevered in faith. He kept going. And we know the consequence. We know the result. He was faithful to the end, and he's faithful to this day. But he had to pass through the indignity of the cross. Likewise, that's the example that the, our Lord gives to us and the Apostle Paul. We pass through the indignities of our failures. We pass through the stuff that we do wrong. The indignity of our sins, our wrong choices, whatever it may be. And in that, in our weaknesses, we find our strength. Because of our failures, we are toughened to live this life more fully for him and for one another. For when I am weak, then I'm strong. Will you bow with me in prayer? Oh, Lord, that is so counterintuitive to the way we live, to the stories we hear of success upon success. Remind us, oh, Lord, that the truly successful people are those who maintain their humility, their gratitude, their manner with one another, with others that allow them to always have a sense of humor and always have a deep sense of joy and appreciation for others who've helped them along the way. Lord God, in your weakness, you made us strong. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's podcast, there are a few things you can do. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. For more information, you can visit us online at www.naplescommunitychurch.org. If you happen to be visiting Naples, please drop in for our Sunday service at 10 a.m. We'd love to meet you. Thanks again for joining us. Have a fabulous day.